What is going on you guys, Rochelle here, bringing you another GIMP animation tutorial. This video is actually in response to my first tutorial video, and I'm going to be answering some of your questions that you guys have. So first of all, I want to say thank you guys so much for watching that video. To be honest, when I made it, I was not expecting to have people watch it at all, and I was just amazed by how many views I got. So I'm glad to have helped so many people out, and I also appreciate you guys watching my video. It it's really shocking, so yeah. Anyways, um, I'm gonna be covering six questions today and I hope it helps you guys out. If it does, please don't forget to give this video a like, comment if you have any more questions, and subscribe if you want to see some more tutorial videos. So the first question I got, which is pretty important so I'll just cover it again, but the question is how do you open up the animation playback panel? So let me just make some screens right now. Now all we're gonna do is go to filters, animation, playback and then all you have to do is press this play button and as you can see the animation plays there's also the step function which will go through one frame at a time rewind which will bring you back to the beginning of the animation not sure what detach does i guess it i don't know you can drag it places sure that's kind of fun um the playback speed this being faster and this being slower so we can play back significantly slower or significantly faster as well as the number of frames per second which is kind of same thing except for it speeds it up so that's your animation playback panel so the next question I have a lot is how do I export an animation without stacking now what I think you mean by stacking is when you have an animation like this and you play it back and the layers stack on top of each other because they're transparent so there's two ways to deal with this one way is if you don't need it to be see-through, you can just give it a background color like this. And then play this back. And as you can see, there's no stacking. But if you really want this animation to be transparent, all you have to do is add the word replace into the layer name. So we're gonna go here replace. You notice I put parentheses around it. You want to have parentheses as well. All right, so we got replace. We're going to go filter, repeat playback. And as you can see, it does not stack anymore. Say you want to export it. It still works perfectly fine. You just need to go to export. You want it to export it as a GIF or GIF, however you want to say it, just so it's an animation. And you're going to want to do as an animation, and you're going to want to change this frame disposal where unspecified, change it to one frame per layer replace, and you export that. Now, if I open this up in a browser, you can see that it's playing back and it's replacing each frame. It's hard to tell that there's no background color because it's a white browser, but you're just going to have to take my word for that. So another question I get a lot is how do you scroll through the layers using a hotkey? And your hotkeys for that is going to be the page up and page down buttons. I would show you right now, but unfortunately those are hotkeys for live streaming and not live streaming. And I don't really want to live stream right now. So we're not going to do that. Um, but yeah, page up and page down. Now that works if you have transparency like this where you can see through it completely. But if you have opacity in your layers like this, where we can't see the previous layers, you might also want to bind a hotkey to the hide icon like this so you can see the other layers. Now to do that, all you have to do is go to edit, keyboard shortcuts, drawable, and visibility. As you can see right now, it's disabled, but if I gave it a crazy shortcut that's not being used, like shift L, you can see it gets bound here. So we'll close that. And if I go here and I press shift L, well, I guess that one's a bad example, but shift L here, you can see that the layers are becoming visible and then not visible. So that's how you can navigate through your layers with hotkeys. Another question I get is, is there a way to export it as MP4? And as far as I know, the answer is no, you can't, but I could totally be wrong. However, there are some websites that you can use to convert your GIFs into MP4s, like this one right here. So this website, Cloud Convert, will let you convert GIF files into MP4. So let me just select one real quick. So we got the GIF we just made with the dots. 
This says we're gonna convert it to MP4. You can change some other settings here if you want, but I haven't really looked at them, so you can play with those on your own. And then you just press start conversion. So I imagine if your animation isn't only four frames, this is gonna take a lot longer. So you can turn on like notify me when it's finished or save to my Dropbox. But for now, we'll just download this file. And as you can see, it's an MP4 file. We open it up and as you can see, it plays the animation. It only plays one time, but it is an MP4. So if you have video editing software, you can mess around with that and get it to have the loop effect. And kind of packaged with that question is how do you upload a GIF to YouTube? I don't know if there's a way to upload it straight as a GIF into YouTube, but using the method I showed before, you can convert it to an MP4 and open up your video editing software like this. And you can just open up your video file and then you can just paste it in a couple of times like this. This is Sony Vegas Pro, but you'll just figure out how to do this in your own video editor. All right, so we paste it in a, a decent amount of times and when we play it, it looks like a regular GIF, how we made it. So now that you have that GIF effect, you can just render the video and upload it to YouTube as you would a normal YouTube video. And the last question I got, it's not really a animation question, it's more of a GIMP question. But the question is, if you accidentally closed your toolbars like this, how do you get them back? And to do that, all you do is go to Windows, Recently Closed Docs, and you can just open them up again. There's also some other dockable dialogues that you can choose over here. And you can open up your own custom docs, whatever you want. Like, I don't know what you would want, but you can like do that, you can rearrange the components of the docs by like attaching them and then putting them somewhere else. I don't know, you can do lots of crazy things with them, but yeah, stuff like this that I didn't mean to do. But to get them back open again, you just use this Windows Recently Closed Docs. All right, well, now that I messed up my GIMP setup, I hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said in the beginning of the video, if this helped, please don't forget to give this video a like, comment if you have any more questions, and subscribe if you want to see some more tutorials. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.